Hey, nah, I'm just in a good mood, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, the pleasure group today. Yep. Um, just how big was getting that win for you guys? You know, every win from here on out is a must win. Um, we got to play it pretty hard, and it was just, you know, excited. To, it was exciting to see the ball finally, you know, go in and, you know, see some of our guys, you know, just continue just to hit those catch and stick threes. And that's been a big emphasis on us just to hit the open shot, you know what I'm saying, and just get the open shots and stop taking difficult shots. And, you know, seeing these guys really lock into the scouting report is pretty uh, inspiring. Yeah, you guys showed us that everything that we've been talking to you about. Yeah. Again, how important are, are second chance points for you and Denier for your team? Yeah. Well, I mean, the only teams that can beat us are the teams that beat us on the boards. And, you know, that's been a very big emphasis on us is just to win the battle on the boards. And uh, we knew going in that we had a, a size advantage, so we had to take advantage of those, giving those second chance opportunities. And thankfully, you know, my teammates kept uh, capitalized on those. Jordan, uh, just a brief first thought from you and your perspective as a team that you guys are going to be playing against today. Just how crucial is that to keep that momentum going throughout the rest of the season? Yeah, it's very crucial. You know, uh, BP always talks about us, you know, our, our 11, our 10 versus the other teams, 5, 6, 7. So, you know, the, the, the team needs us just as much as they need the starters. And, you know, our role is to go out there and, and, and maintain what the starters have already done for us. So going forward, you know, we have to have that mentality to be the best, best five out there, you know, uh, no matter who we're going against. Is that the chance you guys have played this season to offensively and defensively and share in the basketball? I'd say that's probably the best half we've played. I'm not sure um, from top to bottom of the, of the game. But I was very impressed of uh, the first half. You know, kind of reminded me a little bit of last year. You know, just getting teams out of the game early and then just keeping our foot there. Um, it, was, it was pretty inspiring to watch. You know, us hold the team to eight points in like I think 16, 17 minutes. Um, we gave up a little bit too much going towards halftime, but um, it was pretty good basketball to be a part of. It was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. He's a great player, you know. Um, I was just watching them play the, their past game, and I was thinking, talking about Janai, I was like, this game's on us, you know what I'm saying? You know, we can't let this guy get off. You know, he's a great player, um, great shot uh, rim protector, great shot blocker, um, can, he's a decent shooter, you know what I'm saying? So he's an all-around game, and he gave us troubles last year in his, in his first game back, you know. Um, I remember the first half, he came on the lane, dunked it on somebody, he shot an uh, open three. Like, he had, like, seven points in probably, like, the first three minutes of him being in the game. So we know he's a, we know he's a threat. And um, he just continues to show that he's a, a great player. So this game, on, this game on us. Yeah. Um, so after he dunked it, I was sitting down, and I, at first I was like, "That's a push off." That's, that's the first thing I saw. That's the first thing I saw. So I was like, "That's a push off." And then I saw him going up for. I thought I was gonna make a layup, and he dunked it, and I was like, "I just stood up." And then um, like Yoan and. KD ran on the court, and I'm like, I'm trying to avoid getting a tech. So I just shoved Yoan <laughs> off on the baseline towards the photographers. And then KD was, like, going to the three-point line, and I'm like, dog, we're going to get a tech. So I had to hold KD up the whole time, and, um, you know, it was worth it, you know, to not get a tech. But that was probably one of the best things I've seen in the jungle, you know what I'm saying, um, my time here, yeah. KD, I like making fun of KD and Win, so I like picking those two up because they they think they got little man syndrome, so they think they're the big dogs, but you know I gotta humble them a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's inspiring um, just to see a coach give that much effort. And, you know, at the beginning of the season, he talked about uh, being in control of our destiny. And he said that some guys will get to this point and, you know, give up. Some teams will be in the middle of the herd and just be like, man, get selfish and play, you know, selfish instead of playing team ball. And, you know, he's bought into playing championship basketball, whether it's the SEC championship or whether it's the NCAA championship. He hasn't given up on playing championship basketball. And that's something he's talked about heavily about winning a championship. So it's just inspiring to see when things aren't going our way. He's still talking about, you know, reaching the highest heights rather than just being like, okay, guys, let's finish the season strong, you know, be a mid-team. a mid -team. Like, he doesn't want to be that. He wants to be a great team. He wants to make history. So we're all bought into making history, and um, we're just going to keep trying to make history each and every day. 
Um, you know, during the process, I kind of wanted it really bad because my first one in college. But then I kind of got to the point I was like, if it was meant for me to have a double double, I would probably get it. But you know, it was it was it was it was so so close, man. I was so close. And then when Leo uh, didn't pass the ball at last play and passed the other team, I was like, man, Leo, what are we doing? <laughs> but at the end of the day. You know, I was just grateful to be out there with my guys, and I was just grateful to get a team win at the end of the day. It's not about my personal stats. Um, I'd rather win a championship than get a double-double. So um, just continue to go out there and have fun and, and play hard. So. Was it when you were out in the stand and you had that video with the hands against all the people <laughs> that you were able to see there? And the, you knew when the camera was on, you, yeah. you kind of played up to it. Um, what was it like to have him there? Man, it meant the world to me to have my grandfather there. You know, I told myself before the game I wanted that to be my my best game of my life. Like, I didn't care if I, you know, played another game ever in my life again. You know, I could play in NBA Finals. I wanted this game against Alabama, my grandfather to be in tennis. I wanted that to be my best game. And, you know, I was very emotional that morning. And, um, in my time in prayer, I was very emotional, you know, before the game. When I looked at him, it was just, you know, it was just – I was so grateful. I was, like, at a loss of words that my grandfather – was able to make that trip, and um, it it meant so much to me that he was there, and it broke my heart that we weren't able to win. It, it broke my heart that I wasn't able to play my best game in front of him because that's what he deserves, you know, being the man that he is. But after calling him and talking to him, he didn't mention the game once. <laughs> um, he didn't mention my performance once. He didn't mention the outcome once. He just talked about how grateful he was to be there, and it kind of showed me a sense of gratitude that I lack in life about you know being so attached to the end result. Um, at the end of the day, just being grateful for the opportunity my, my grandfather showed me. I, um, he just talked about being so thankful to be at the game. Like, that's literally all he talked about. He says it's it the best weekend of his life. And, you know, he's uh, 82, turning on 83. That's a lot of weekends to have. And uh, I'm just grateful that I was a part of the best weekend of his life. But it meant so much for me to, for, uh, for me for him to be there. And then for him to take over the Jumbotron like that, you know, be the OG Jumbotron, man, it just, it, it just, it's like a full circle moment for me. I'm just so grateful that my grandfather got to experience the jungle for the first time in his life. And, you know, hopefully he's able to come back to another game and hopefully we're able to win that game because, you know, he deserves the world and I love him to death. And um, I'm just going to continue to just to, just to, you know, keep hooping for him and, and just hopefully play my best every game for him, you know. Thank you. Thank you.